Well, despite some legal relief for the former U.S. president, let's remind you of his three criminal trials that are still pending at different stages. Uh, Trump has been found guilty on 34 felony charges for falsifying business records by a New York court. He's appealing that case. The sentencing there is expected in September. He also faces 10 felony charges for unlawfully conspiring to change the 2020 election outcome in the state of Georgia. But that trial is on hold, likely until next year. And lastly, Trump faces four charges related to his efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election and for his own actions during the attack on the Capitol on January 6, 2021. That case will also likely face some significant delays. Well, let's speak to Dina Sayak Dahl. She's an attorney and legal analyst who joins us now from Los Angeles. So, Dina, just focusing on, on this case to begin with, Judge Cannon threw out the documents case, not on its merits, but on a specific point of disagreement about how the special counsel was appointed. What does that actually mean for the charges that Trump faces in this case? They haven't necessarily entirely gone away, right? Well, they haven't gone to the merits of the case, as you say. But according to her, the indictment, so the charges would go away because it was filed by the special counsel, which she says is unconstitutional. Doesn't necessarily mean that somebody else can't re-bring those charges, but that is a huge process. He went through the grand jury. That's how the indictment came about. Uh, so we're, we're talking about that being kind of a, a large upheaval to even re-bring the charges. Uh, what's going to happen first, certainly, is Jack Smith will appeal this this motion to dismiss and argue that his appointment was constitutional and should be able to proceed. Uh, what kind of timing are we looking at here? If that appeal does take place, as we expect that it will, presumably none of this is going to get resolved before the election. Definitely not. I mean, this appeal most likely will go to the Supreme Court. We saw um, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas just in that opinion about the, whether or not President Trump got absolute immunity with his January 6th mm -hmm. case, say in his concurring opinion that he thought uh, the appointment of a special prosecutor uh, Jack Smith was unconstitutional. Certainly, this led the way to Judge Cannon's dismissal. I think she saw that as support for her argument. Um, and so, whether or not Clarence Thomas was speaking with his own opinion, as he was in that opinion, or if that was a precursor to how the whole Supreme Court will eventually rule when they see mm. this case on appeal, uh, I think that's a big question mark, is whether or not the Supreme Court will take it and agree with Judge Cannon, or was Justice Thomas an outlier when he made those mm -hmm. comments? Uh, well, Trump, meanwhile, is saying that, that all criminal and civil cases should be thrown out. Could this actually affect any of the other cases against him? Or given that it's also about how special counsels are appointed, could this affect the case against President Biden's son, Hunter? It will not affect the case against uh, President Biden's son, Hunter, because his special counsel was also um, an, an attorney general who was already appointed and approved by the mm -hmm. Senate in his kind of, let's say, day job capacity. Uh, that's the difference here is Jack Smith wasn't already um, an appointed and approved attorney right. within the attorney office. He was brought in from the outside. So it won't quite, it will not affect Hunter Biden's case the same way as it will affect Donald Trump's case. If the Supreme Court were to, and I think it would have to be the Supreme Court who would rule this, but if the Supreme Court ruled that, yes, Jack Smith's appointment is unconstitutional, it would certainly affect the January 6th case because he was the one that brought mm -hmm. the indictment there in D.C. It will not affect affect the Georgia case because special counsel has no role in the Georgia case. That is the um, the DA prosecutor, Bonnie Willis, is the one who's going forward with that Georgia case. Uh, let me ask you about some speculation that's been going around because Judge Cannon, who made this ruling on the documents case, she was put on the bench by Trump. She also has, as I understand it, a reputation for fairly unusual decisions. The timing, too, seems notable. The, the first day of the RNC, mm -hmm. 48 hours after an assassination attempt. What do you make of, of all of that? You know, there are evidently colleagues of Judge Cannon had suggested that she don't 
doesn't take the case. She was randomly given this case. It's a random process, but they said, you know, this, you should step aside. She didn't step aside. The fact is, is she was appointed a few short years ago by Trump, and then she has that case against him. Uh, to me, that does seem like that would be like a conflict of interest, and how could she remain impartial? And the fact is, a lot of her decisions, people have been questioning. She's taken under advisement issues that didn't seem to have any kind of legal plausibility. And to your point about the timing, this issue of Jack Smith was raised way back in February. So for it to come out the day of the RNC, definitely good timing for Trump. And because he appointed her not that long ago, it's really hard not to see all of her actions in some sort of lens of whether or not she is indeed favoring the former president. And, Dina, just lastly, before I let you go, I wonder if you can perhaps contextualize her decision for, for our viewers, because the appointment of special counsels has essentially been done in this manner for nearly the last 30 years. So, so this is quite a, as someone else phrased earlier on, on our news, a fringe decision. Well, it's interesting because, to your point, we have been acting as if in a country that um, the attorney general can appoint a special counsel, and that's normal. Uh, it's even to the fact that this absolute immunity decision allowed the case to go back down the court to Jack Smith in D.C. So we've been acting as if the attorney general can appoint special counsel. What Judge Cannon is saying is that the powers of appointment under the Constitution can only be done through an act of Congress. And it is true that the congressional act that specifically laid out the power of appointment that was put in place after Nixon then expired in 1999. And since 1999, the attorney general has been um, appointing special counsels under their regulatory power, which is also given by Congress, but maybe is not as um, let's say, explicit in the delegation of the power. And that's what she's latching onto, is that since that congressional act expired in 1999, the regulatory power that the attorney general is using is not proper. But this is the first time a judge has said that, and we have been practicing as if that regulatory power is constitutional. So her opinion is an outlier. And if we were in a different circumstance with different Supreme Court justices, I would say that motion to dismiss would be overturned. But because of what Clarence Thomas in the Supreme Court said in his concurring opinion about his belief of the special counsel, we don't know how many other justices agreed with him. And it's possible they might decide that the um, that the regulatory actions that the attorney general has been acting as if they had power wasn't enough. Dina Saigdol there, an attorney and legal analyst, breaking that all down for us from Los Angeles. Thank you so much for your expertise and insights with us here on Al Jazeera, Dina. Thank you for having me.